Hello. That's very helpful. Hi, guys. I got to be honest. I've dressed up Please. the past three episodes, four, including this one. Yeah. Next week, I'm wearing sweatpants. She's gone. <laughs> like, I took a walk work. on the wild side, and now I'm going now, back. <laughs> yeah. I want to embrace Screw my hobo. that. I feel like sometimes you're a hobo, and sometimes I'm a hobo, and sometimes we're glam, sometimes we're not. It's like, you know what I mean? I know. Letting ourselves flow, like what we were just talking about off air. Right, yeah. We're talking about, like, releasing control of different things in life. And just I know, and just embracing what's happening. Whatever's so happening hard for me to moment. do. I'm such a control freak. I mean, it happens. It happens. Yeah. Speaking of control freak, I am, um, I'm having trouble finding my notes. notes. But you know what? That's okay. It's Mercury Retrograde, and I should have expected this. Wait, we yeah. found him. We found him. Okay, cool. What if we could do? I, I can't. You I'm can't make this up. I'm trying to be like super zen right now. Okay. I like you how you're holding me? the energy. I'll be zen. She's just being zen Ooh, hey, right next to us. That always reminds me of your show. Well, as it should. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, you guys. Welcome to Astro Candy. It is so great to see you. Mm. So good to have you here with us. Always. Raven, how's your vibe? My vibe is relaxed. Chill day F. God. Brittany gave us the little uh, it. saging mm-hmm. energy. I felt like that just like whoosh, took away all of my negative energy. Absolutely. All of my anxious energy. Absolutely. My chaotic energy. And now I'm really just kind of sitting in what's left, peace and tranquility. And I'm feeling great. I'm feeling fucking zen. I can feel it. Like this couch is a very tranquil ocean. Yeah. I love that for me. It's Maybe beautiful. it's because I'm not hosting though. You know what I mean? It, like, it could be a combo. Thing. There is a responsibility. I don't, I'm not sure if you guys have noticed, but Brittany and I like take turns now when mm-hmm. it comes to leading a discussion. And it is so nice to not have to just chill, lead the discussion and just kind of sit back and chime in and make comments and, and then you just know. like be, you know, you can be Zen while you're doing it. Can do, be Zen. Sure. Much more anxious energy when you're hosting though. Well, I'm happy to hear that you're feeling so zen. So zen. I don't know Embracing what Embracing your inner, you well, know, whatever's going on, whether it's hobo energy or housewife energy, whatever. Today it's housewife. Real housewife energy, you know what I'm talking about. That's great. So, um, okay, cool. Well, How are you? My vibe is also good. Mm-hmm. I don't really know. Um, there's just a lot going on, like what we talked about. There's a lot going on, guys. I don't know. I mean, the vibe is good and as zen as possible. Yeah. But I am excited about this. I feel like no matter what's going on, this like, it's just been a hectic thing. week. Mm-hmm. Well, I think you know. the problem that we have both been having, which we were talking about off air, is this, like, constant catch-up game that we're playing in our Isn't life. Isn't that the worst feeling? When you, like, feel like you start to get behind, and then once you get behind, your anxiety ramps up. Peaks. And then you stay you're just behind. Like, it's like, yeah, you stay behind. Probably because of the anxiety. In an effort to get ahead, you're you always behind. behind. <laughs> you're trying to get ahead, so you're, like, rushing. It's like... And at what point um, do you just kind of think like, okay, wait, all of this, like, why am I running around like a chicken with my head cut off trying to do this and that? And the, like, if you would just like be like, I'm not doing that and I'm not doing that and not doing that. Okay, cool. I'm all caught up. Because wouldn't that yeah. be what it takes is to just eliminate things from your plate and then you're caught up? I think so. Or you do all of them, but... You do them methodically <laughs> and in a, well, I mean, that's, that's an option too. There's a lot of options. Um, I say you let go of the, the stress and you just like do them. Like you communicate with people, let them know like, Hey, I'm going to need to move this out. And up, 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 up. You rearrange it. Yeah. And then you do it. And then you're like, you just let yourself, you give yourself permission to adjust and you don't take on the belief that you're messing up somehow. I see. You're like, you know, we gotta, we gotta change. When I, um, fun fact, when I played a detective on the what? TNT show Dallas for like, I think two episodes. Stop it. Was very, it. very small. But they had to teach me how to use professional handcuffs um, because I had to As handcuff As opposed to someone. what handcuffs are you used to using, well, there's Brittany? A- <laughs> Raven, good God. She said I professional refuse, I refuse to answer that, but no. there's Well, there's a difference because professional handcuffs, shut up. They're made of metal and you're supposed to do this thing called bumping someone's wrist. I mean, the things you learn on a oh. set. And- they do it, like in a real life situation, they would do that to a criminal or a suspected criminal or whatever to make their hand go numb because you want to hit this bone here. So Why do you want to numb someone's hand? Well, if they're being arrested, I mean, I don't know. I don't speak on behalf of any. This is what I learned <laughs> on a set, okay? Um, supposedly, like if you, it's like an option. Like if someone's being crazy or unruly or whatever and 
a police officer needs to be able to like kind of stun them or make them just kind of calm down. Yeah. You can take the, the metal handcuff and you can like, like what I would do is I would go like this and I hit you right on that oh. bone with the metal and you'd be like, and then your, oh. arm, your hands go numb, you know, when that happens. What a technique. So I had to be trained, long story short, they had to train me and make sure that I didn't do that to the actor. Mm. To Patrick Duffy, shout out. That was fun. He's a, such a classic, amazing actor. But I like didn't want to hit him. Obviously, I was freaking out. Wait, st- I heard something go beep. Which is weird because I just charged <laughs> both of them before we even got here. Ugh, and of course, I didn't freaking bring that one out. Do you think it's that one? Well, this one is still recording. That it's one's red. Good, so are we fine? Let's just keep going. Let's just keep going. That is weird because I charge both of them. They're both green. Oh, I believe that they're, it's probably a card full. But I clear both cards. Remember? They're totally empty. I may, yours is definitely totally empty. And mine is way more empty than it was yesterday. Hmm. I mean, 90%. Okay. I'm sorry to jog your I erased all the old thought. B-Zen episodes. It should, I mean, there's no reason. All right. So <clears throat> long story short, what I learned on this set was, it was like an old military saying, because the person who was training me was in the military. And he said, just remember, because I was really nervous. I didn't want to accidentally bump the actor and like, I don't know. Yeah. You're just stressed out on set anyway. It's a lot of pressure. And he goes, just remember, whenever you get stressed out or anxious, slow is smooth and smooth is fast. And I had to think about slow it. Slow is smooth. Slow is smooth and smooth is fast. And I was like, whoa. So when people get, what that means is when people get anxious, they try to speed up or overcompensate or they start acting in a very adrenaline infused way. And that's going to mess you up. So you're going to go, Dude, you're going to go yeah. slower when you're like that. You're going to mess up. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to say the wrong thing. You're going to embarrass yourself. You're going to be awkward. You're, I mean, it's a whole thing. But if you just, when you start to get stressed out, tell yourself slow is smooth and smooth is fast. Give yourself permission to do what you do and like do it well. Do it right. I really could have used then, this pep talk last episode. And move on through it. I feel like that happened to me. I was like just so in my anxious energy that right. I was just like, I couldn't. And I was trying to overcompensate because I was anxious. And the and worse it gets, the worse it gets. Because then you're thinking. Yeah. Wow. That's a great tip. Who knew? Well, really quick though, before you move on, how do we find this episode of oh, you Oh, you can on definitely Dallas? just... It's, I think it's like on Netflix. I think it's everywhere. No freaking you just way. Gotta, I don't remember the episode number. I can't believe... I think it was season two. I don't remember the, was it four? I don't remember the episode number. You'd have to go and kind of. I am, this is my new mission in life. Well, find it. It should actually only take me like a week. I'm a little busy the She's next few watch. days, but I will and, sit down and, and enjoy and the to show, find. by the way. It's Thank quite you. juicy. <laughs> I love this. I feel like I should get your autograph. <laughs> oh my God, Raven. You're so sweet. I'm amongst the celebrity. Oh, for sure. Huge celebrity. Do you ever feel like you have so many people around you who do so many cool things? And you're like, oh, I'm not really there. But like, you're actually also doing cool things. Like, I try not to compare because I, I think it's because I've been doing this for so long that I try not to compare because I feel like sometimes someone will be doing something and it's like a season. And then you have your season. And true. Then they have a season. That's very true. Do you know true. what I mean? And it depends yeah. on like what you're valuing. Like, was it cool? Like, did I feel more famous-ish, I guess, when I did, like, a national um, BMW commercial or advertisement that was, you know, in Germany? Yeah, like, I felt more famous, but, like, what did that do for me? Nothing. Like, no one recognized me on the street. But, like, it felt cool. But then, like, what I'm doing now, it's, like, a local Dallas thing. But, like, I enjoy it, and I feel like I have control. Like, it's just different, I guess. It's, like, you weigh out the different priorities, and you're, like, sometimes I feel fed by that. Sometimes yeah, I feel fed by that. But I think that the comparison thing is like a thief of all your joy. Oh, for sure. You've got to be so careful with that. Yeah. I think though it what is about you? easy. Why well, did you bring it up? You I brought it that? up because like, you know, I think that's so cool that you were in a TV show. So like how bad ass and you host your own TV show. You're doing podcasting. You're doing like everything. Thank you. And there are so many people in our network of friends who also do great things with Mm -hmm. audio with music with television with whatever it is and I sometimes get really caught up in like oh my god look at all these people around me doing so many cool things yeah but then I kind of forget like hey I'm I'm right there like I'm also doing 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 cool things things. yeah people look at you and they think oh my gosh she's on the radio she's on middays and it you know yeah market in the United States like so I guess at what the I'm top of your freaking game getting at. Thank People you. Look at you like that. I look at you like that. Thank you. And that's why I'm like, it's so important to like hype yourself up. 
Like, Hype yourself up. It's all relative. It's, it's just, all relative. Yeah. And it has a lot to do with imposter syndrome, which is, we could totally which do is a real episode on that. That's a real thing. Mm-hmm. Did you read the book uh, Work Party by Jacqueline Johnson? I did not. From Create Cultivate? No. Okay. Whatever. You guys read it. Check it I'm out. sure it's great, though. I'm like, I'm I'm like it's not a reader. I went down the wrong road. <laughs> I took a left turn. We're going to get back on the road. Um, <laughs> no, but like, so when I interviewed her, I asked her about imposter syndrome because there was a lot of the book where she talked about it. And she said that she had recently interviewed Martha Stewart. And so mm. she kind of changed her mind on what she had been thinking at the time when she wrote the book, which I bet happens to people all the time. Oh, yeah. And she was like, you know, Martha Stewart told me, like, what is that? And, like, I forgot how she said it, but it was really funny. She was like, what is that? And I'm, and why am I thinking? It was something like, Martha Stewart, you know, she's funny. She said something like, why would you think that? But then she acknowledged it. She knew what it was. And it's almost like, who is she? I don't know her. That kind of energy. Mm -hmm. But she was like, wait, I'm trying. I really, I'm sorry. I can't let it go. She said something like, what is that? Oh, I don't know what that is. And neither should you. She was like very intense about it. And then Jacqueline said that she was just like kind of awestruck by the comment. She was like, whoa, she wasn't expecting that. And it's just like, not letting it in, I guess Martha Stewart's oh, opinion yeah. is like, you just don't even acknowledge that that's a thing. She was like, what is that? I don't know what it is. And neither should you. You should not be acquainted with it. I was like, what, a, what a badass. Okay, yeah. honey. I wonder what her sign is. Martha was with the words. Should we guess? We should guess. Intense. She's probably a fire sign. You use a fire sign? Or maybe a Capricorn because big boss energy. Oh, yeah, that too. Maybe. But, fi- but that was fiery to say. That was pretty fiery. Mm. I don't know. Maybe an Aries. That could be an Aries thing. I was thinking Aries. Aries or, I don't know. I thought Virgo, but I could be wrong. I'm going to like go past this. Like, <laughs> yeah. Is this how you see <laughs> That. Anyway. We'll keep you updated on Martha Stewart's we'll you, sign. Well, we'll put it, we'll put it in the and description. And for more breaking news. <laughs> we'll put it in the description. <laughs> I think that is breaking freaking news. <laughs> but today, you guys, we're going to be talking about attracting love with chic Feng Shui home decor. Ooh, exciting. I know. Okay, but before we even talk about that, I forgot. You were discussing with us a few episodes ago that, like, you're getting into home decor. You were thinking of getting an interior designer. Where yeah. are you at with that process? Uh, still thinking on it. Okay. I just have had so many other priorities, like going places, traveling, people in town. Yeah, sometimes it's not you the know, right time it's to just, Sit down and yeah. deconstruct your whole living space. And I knew that if I did decided to hire a designer, it would be a really big financial commitment. So mm-hmm. I'm just like really not there yet. But I did have someone design my bedroom space. So maybe I can speak to the pieces that she okay. incorporated in my bedroom design, how I feel about them, whether it's feng shui Tell or it. not. Tell it. Well, my favorite part about my bedroom design is this massive, like really big headboard, um, green velvet bed. Ooh, I know. It sounds big heart chakra energy. Really? Green and pink are heart chakra. No way. Oh, because yeah. the original design was green and pink, but I told her no pink. So instead it's like green and then some golds, black. Sounds pretty. Oranges, blues. Pretty. Like it's like Yeah. It's kind of mm-hmm. brooding a little bit, sounds but like, like it. also light and fun. It's kind of like me. Well, I think that if your bedroom aesthetic matches your personality, you're definitely doing something right. That's what I was going for. I love it. So far, so good. I'll have to do the rest of the house now. (laughs) Right? It's like, isn't it funny? Like when you get one area done, you're like, oh, there's so much more to do. Oh, yeah. It's very disheartening. Oh, my gosh. You can get upset about it pretty quick. I don't want to go there, actually. I'm starting to think about it. At the beginning of, okay. So, which brings me to my first point. So, what you want to do when it comes to creating your sanctuary A sanctuary is a space where you should be able to completely be yourself, be at peace. It's a place of rest. It's a place where you can just recharge and refuel, right? And when we don't take the time to make sure that our sanctuary feels like nurturing, when we just kind of like neglect it or we put it very last on the list because we're prioritizing everything else, it can get to where we kind of feel icky in our space. Been there, right? Might be there right now. Yeah. It's kind of how mean, I feel about my living room space because I haven't, I look around. I have like a few pieces of furniture, but it doesn't feel like home. Okay. 
So, so that's a vibe, right? It's a vibe, and it's so kind of we weighing me down. The vibe is like, you know, it's like it's okay, like you're almost there. But if you walked in and it was like decorated the way that mm. you envision, do you think Would you'd feel love. different when you I walk through the I feel like, door? oh my God, I'm home. This is my space. It has my imprint on it. I feel yeah. safe. I feel comforted. It's a reflection of you. Like you just yeah. feel like at home in your own energy. Totally. Right? Mm -hmm. So that is what building your sanctuary is about. And it doesn't necessarily, you know, I'm not saying you have to like spend a ton of money or whatever. Whatever works for your budget and like where you're at right now is totally fine. It's just like being mindful of your space and thinking about what would make you feel more comfortable. So the first thing you're going to want to do is really pay attention to the love corner. This is a feng shui thing. So when you walk through the door, love corner into okay. a room, the far right hand corner. So let's say there's a door here. We walk through it. It's going to be over there. The far, okay. far right-hand corner, that is your love corner of any room. Now, of course, your bedroom is going to be the room where you're going to want to pay the most attention to your love corner for obvious reasons, but every single room is going to have that corner. What so does a love corner mean? Your love it, corner is the space where the energy in your home is flowing, and it it basically is like connecting with that love energy. Like if we look at... If we look at the home, like we look at the body, you know, there are like seven, seven main chakras in the body. Mm -hmm. In a home, according to ancient, the ancient Chinese philosophy of feng shui, the home also has different energy channels and centers. So when we treat the home with that kind of respect and mindfulness, like shout out Marie Kondo, if you guys have seen that on Netflix, um, we do that, we're able to create a space that's conducive for energy flow and for like our highest sell for our, our most growth and comfort and we okay. can really thrive in that energy. So the first thing you want to do before anything else, like let's say you don't have the budget right now to buy new things. Well, you can always start where you're at. You want to clear the space. You want to purge. You want to take anything, especially out of that corner. If like, let's say that you put your dirty laundry there. It's so funny because that's what I, <laughs> when I was researching this, like I'm great about doing laundry and stuff, but then like sometimes I won't fold it. You know, mm -hmm. I'll just like, and that far right corner was becoming my little corner. And when I read this, I was like, oh my, I am sabotaging myself right now. Mm -hmm. So I took everything out of the corner, you know. It means your love and is dirty and smelly. It's dirty and smelly. <laughs> well, it was. But I you mean, fixed it. it wasn't, but it could have become that way. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. If you're not mindful, you can, you know, you got to pay attention to all these areas. So what kind of things do you want to put there? So you want to put things that are very heart chakra focused okay so the color green is one of the heart chakra colors so is the color pink so mm. there's this rose quartz cb2 side table that i found just for you guys while researching this this they're not sponsoring us but honestly their stuff's just cute they should they though. should we'll, we'll reach out we'll see but um so something like that it's really beautiful it just has this nice little rose quartz top to it mm -hmm. and then it's black on the bottom so it's just like this beautiful piece that looks very elegant simple and if you were to put that over in that corner I would say you should put things like you know flowers on there you should put mm, okay. um, a candle especially like those intention candles that have like you know yeah love candles and things like that anything that you really love or want to bring in as far as like your relationships and things like that are concerned you want to concentrate it there. So make a little, not an altar, but you know what I mean? Make a little yeah. sanctuary. Make a little area where you're manifesting what you want. And if you're totally single and no man has been to your house, I would say <laughs> go online, print out a picture of the guy that you do want to date. Oh my God, and I'm put it over there. there. But I say no man because like if someone walked in that you were dating and saw that, yeah, they'd that'd be, be like, strange. Is she okay? So is this just in the bedroom space or in any room? So the every right, room, far right is the... So every room is different. Corner. So... um there are like charts that you guys can look at. It gets really entailed. So the bedroom is really where that energy is okay. concentrated. Interesting. I don't it's have... in the living room. It's different in the kitchen. I have like a... What are those things called? It's yeah, not an entertainment in stand. It's... um, What are they called? I'm blanking on the name. It's a very... Not an arm, armoire, but like something... Is, is it as of drawers? It's, it's like little open doors oh mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know a credenza a credenza thank was, you i have hard. a credenza over there um 
and I haven't decorated. I don't have like the little knickknacks to decorate it with, but I just have one thing. And oh my God, guess what it is? Holy shit. What? What? Are you already doing like undercover manifesting? Yeah. I'm going to cry. What? Oh my God, she really is going to cry. My very good friend Fallon. Because it can be friendship love too and self love. Well, no, listen. My very good friend Fallon painted me a picture that I requested and it's a picture of Glacier National Park because I went there with my boyfriend Carter and he took a picture of me there and it's this most, like the most gorgeous scenery, but the trip meant a lot because that's where we officially started dating. And And that's in your corner? Right there in my right corner of my freaking bedroom. So intuitively- It's the only thing on my credenza and it's in the far right- Is that not the craziest thing? That's adorable and amazing. And obviously, like intuitively, you are very tuned out. in. You're <laughs> tuned in. No wonder things are going so well. So tell me you're more tuned, about- You're tuned in. The other, are there other areas of the room that we should be aware so, of? Or is that just like the main, main one? So, I mean, there are a lot of other areas, you guys. But I just wanted to get into the sanctuary aspect because I okay. feel like that's a rabbit hole that you can really dive in okay. and get deep. There's like a- you know, fame corner, there's a money corner. Like there's, there's all okay. kinds of corners. But since we're like, you know, in February. We're dipping our toe. We can do another episode. I'm thinking about love. I'm thinking about self-love. You know, all those things. Have you ever like decorated your home with things like that in mind? Like this sounds like it's kind of like a fluke, but like, have you ever decorated your home thinking like, I want to attract this or I want to put more of this color because that's what I kind of want. Never. No? And I hate that. I hate that I haven't. But so what's weird is, I did that by accident. Like, you guys can't see this, but I have a couch over here. Also from CB2, I think I have a problem. Um, <laughs> and it's this very pale pink that matches the color of my wedding ring. Now, did I know that at the time when I bought that? Of course not. But it's funny. I used to joke about it because, like, that color is, like, my favorite color. And Michael, my husband, he really loves the color blue. So I bought like these feathers and I was like, this one's for you, honey. I mean, you know, cause he's here all the time. This is the most feminine place you can imagine. So I bought those for him. Oddly enough, his ring, his wedding ring ended up being a blue sapphire and mine is a pink sapphire. And we didn't connect or think about it at the time. Weird. But when we were here hanging out one day, I was like, isn't it kind of weird that our like theme colors are pink and blue. And then we ended up getting wedding rings that have pink and blue stones without like consciously having that like as a thing Mm -hmm. and he was like yeah that's weird it also kind of like is a testament to how much your subconscious rules you or the universe is bringing you together with the people that are like on your frequency and that too and you could be like living in it without knowing i mean it's all like could be either one depends yeah, like Don't let's not at. even get into like that's another astral level. projections and different timelines of reality. Oh God, I don't want astral projections. Not astral projections. It sounds um, scary as hell. What what is it? What's it called? Oh, quantum, quantum jumping, leaping. Thank you. And yes. different realms of reality, and you can go to different timelines and like pick up the knowledge from those timelines yeah. and have them with you. Do you believe that you can do that? Um, I honestly believe that you can do fucking anything. <laughs> So that's I know a, that that's leaves, a strong... leaves a lot open, but I just feel like there is just more to everything mm-hmm. and nothing would put that. I, I totally, it could happen, I guess. Wow. Like, do you like, do aliens exist? I feel like they have to only because how could they not if the universe is so big, right? I'm not saying they're like the little gray people. Like, I don't know what they are, but yeah. Like something else has to be something out there. else. That's what I'm saying. It's just like it's one of those questions. Does quantum jumping is that real? Are aliens real? Mm-hmm. Is astral projection real? Like, <laughs> like who knows? What right? is consciousness? And did you know? I'm sorry. I don't. Never mind. No, well, say it. Say well, it. I was just gonna say I was watching this show on Netflix. It's called Surviving Death, and it's all about Ooh. people who have ha- who have died, and they talk about how the your your air of consciousness quite literally just expands to something that you can't even really comprehend. So like you, you in your body right now, your consciousness is just so limited. We're like condensed. We, we're so condensed. We're compact right now. But the second you're out, it's just like cool. nothing exists. Cool. Like, or possibilities exist really. Like there are fun. no walls. There's no limitations. There's just 
Ooh. It was crazy and you should watch it in any way. I'm that was watch my it. Aquarius tangent for the episode. I love it. My Sagittarius <laughs> rising energy is like, that sounds amazing. Yes, let's Can't wait to it. just like adventure, no <laughs> limits. Um, so, okay. A few things, just like some little tips to have. If you guys are wanting to build a sanctuary, if you're feeling kind of drained, like, you know what I mean? Like when you kind of come home and you're feeling drained and you really need a space to recharge and you just don't feel like you have it right now. Sometimes we overlook our space and how much it can affect us, how much like those little cluttery spots are making us feel icky. So what you can do is first just like clear it out, get that stuff out of there, donate it, throw it away, have a friend help you guys have pizza. Do Like, you know, make it fun, make it a little ritual, enjoy it, try to put good energy into your space. And then when you start to put things back into your space, Think about, this is very Marie Kondo, but think about only putting things in the space that make you feel good. Things that really do lift your vibration because the space is so personal, it really can impact your mood. It can impact your motivation. So you want to find those things that excite you and lift you up. Maybe put your, you know, your soul color. If you guys did that quiz in the other episode, like put your soul color around, like do things that reflect your highest self. Like if you're wanting to attract love, I'd say sumptuous fabrics, candles, like act as if you're living in a place that already Mm -hmm. has all the things that you want. So, and you can bring that in however you need to. So, okay. So there's that. And then you want to get some sage or Palo Santo and you want to regularly get on a saging schedule. It's very important to do. It's very important. When anyone comes into your home or when you come home after a long day of work or whatever you've been doing, you have a conversation on the phone and it's kind of negative, whatever it is, you want to sage regularly because it's a reset for your home and also for yourself. And even if it's, let's say that the spiritual part is like minor, I feel like mentally it's good. Like, you know, you're saging, you know, you're clearing it up. Okay. So let's get to our, our uh, spirit. spirit guide. I saw Raven's eyes. I know. She was like, Oh my I God. I gave her the glare. She was like, oh my God. I was like, lady. We're about to die. Okay, <laughs> my brother. Hopefully oh. those aren't ones you need. Oh my God. Well, who knows? Those could have been. That must have been a the universe being like, not those ones. <laughs> oh shit. You got this. I believe. I'm, okay. Wait. No. No. Different one. Cool. Doing great. My brother and I have been best (laughs) friends since he was born. I'm two years older than him. Seriously attached to the hip. But ever since he started dating someone, we've grown further apart. That's not what I'm worried about, though. I'm worried because his girlfriend is a total bitch. She's controlling, arrogant, and just plain mean. Every time I've told him this, he brushes it off and says, I'll I'll warm up to her. It's like she has him under a spell. How do I get him to see my point of view? Yikes. Okay. I'm not entirely sure what all these cards mean. Okay. So I'm going to have to have Brittany help me on this. But the first one I pulled was the Ten of Wands, which is a very weighing down card. I can see that this situation frustrates you. It's been a lot of work. Maybe she puts a lot of uh, strain on your relationship with your brother, on you emotionally, physically, whatever. Uh Like people like that can be draining especially if they're, like you say, a bitch. Mm -hmm. The next one I got was the Ace of Swords, which is probably the solution to the problem. And I say that because following the Ace of Swords, it's the Ten of Cups. Little Miss, I was confused and need help. Uh, Yeah. But I don't know exactly what Ace of Swords is other than an offering of logic. Of Use your logic. Use your logic. Detach emotionally. Detach emotionally. And rely on your logic. Okay. You had it. I mean, yeah. Did I? Oh my god. Yeah. Okay, guys, I'm still a newbie. Um. Anyway, so yeah, I would it's say as long spirit. as you detach emotionally, I know you're upset about it, mm-hmm. but just take it at what it is. It'll all shake out. Ten of Cups is ultimate happiness. Blah blah blah. And that's that. What's modern day mantra? <laughs> and that's that. You do not find the happy life. You make it. Camilla Iring Kimball. There we go. Make your life happy. Create a safe. Space that you protect and love and enjoy and you know let us know let us know how it's going so this pics of your home decor oh yeah Raven please Edenso. i would love She's decorating. i need and if you're a interior designer <laughs> reach out dma <laughs> okay <Like> DMA. <laughs> okay bye bye guys love you <laughs>